Hey guys, we're live. We are live. This is Nikki with That Homeschool Life. And I'm just popping in with a quick live. I love lives. You guys can come on in and ask me questions about anything. Okay, so if you saw the thumbnail, oops, sorry guys. I have a whole bunch of resources that I've used in the past with my children when teaching time. I'm just moving the resources out the way. I apologize for all the noise. Time can be a tricky topic to teach. And I have some resources to help you get through that. Okay, so let's start with, well, I'll start with the very first thing I made. Like, how old is my son? 13, six, maybe six, seven years ago. It's the time flower. I actually have a video on how I use this. It's an old video. I was California homeschool mom back then, but I do have that video on this channel. So check that out. It's telling time with flowers. So uh, you don't have to do this, make this. But one thing that I found that helped for kids to comprehend that when the minute hand was on four, it wasn't like 1104, it was 1120, was to put the all the digits around uh, the clock. Now, if you don't wanna make that, and your time is precious, Target has in their, um, their little school section, they have something similar to that a flower clock. And it, um, they don't have all the numbers, but they have, you know, just in five minute increments, which is still helpful. What I liked about this was that it tells you quarter of, half past, all of that. All of the things that start to trip up kids once they get past the whole hour and the half hour. So quarter two, half past, quarter past, all of that. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this video on time is that my kids have all aged out of a lot of materials that we have, and I need space in my homeschool room. So since my youngest son, he's got time mastered, it's time to get rid of the resources. So I'm going to gift all of these time resources to a mom, a new homeschooler actually, who has younger kids. Okay, uh, I'll just go over the basic ones. So these I've gotten from Lakeshore, my favorite uh, teacher um, learning resource store. You can get these on Amazon, eBay. Um, I think I got this from eBay. It's like 10 for $1.50. It's, it's real heavy cardstock. Well, thicker than cardstock. But I like that they have the minute hand is red, the hour hand is blue. Now, Lake Lakeshore, they have lots of great clocks. Same thing, the hour hand and the minute, the minute and the hour hand are different colors. But they also have a little stand in the back. So you can um, set it up on your child's table and they can um, do their math. Uh, flashcards, dollar store. I've had these forever. Now, this is what I do with the flashcards because you know flashcards can get really boring. I don't think this is working. One of my outlets in my um, laptop does not work. So I don't even know if that's this microphone is streaming. So instead of using... Instead of using flashcards in the regular old born way, remember, I got three boys. So what I do with, with my youngest, I um, have a little whiteboard and with markers, uh, two markers, one for each child. I, I would make it a time game. So what they would have to do is they would start back maybe uh, 15, 20 feet, however, whatever. They would just start back a distance and then they would rush to the whiteboard, pick up a card, read the time, and then write the time on the whiteboard and then run back and then do it again like five times. So a lot of um, um, objectives came out of that. One, exercise. <laughs> uh, two, making time fun, just the fun factor, making associations with fun. Um, three, being able to recall their facts or uh, recall time quickly. Okay. So, um, and then, so my oldest one, uh, was in fourth grade. My youngest was in second. So my oldest, obviously he was going to 
probably do better, but my youngest one is faster. So I felt like the 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 playing field was level. They love this. I would say, hey guys, go do your time game. And they would set it up, set the cards like this in front of the flat, in front of the whiteboard, have their markers down, run, grab, down, and then run back, and then run back, grab a card, write it down. And I would go check the cards and give them a little treat. And they were good. Okay. So flashcards. Now moving on to books. Now for me, I found the books, the, the manipulatives are good. The books were better. Now, let's see. To start, I like stories. We remember things through stories. Y'all remember Schoolhouse Rock? Y'all can sing every song on there. Well, I'm just a bill, only a bill. Conjunction, function, what's your... I hope I don't get a copyright strike. Anyway, so we we remember very well through song and repetition. So one thing that I like, oh, stories. Okay, this is an old school book. This is by Marilyn Burns. I have all of her books. She does Blood and Guts, uh, The Book of Where, um, I, the I Hate Mathematics books. I have almost all of her books, Gee Whiz, Geog Geography. So for this one, it tells the story about time. Now, this book, you know, this is during a time of School of Rock. So it's like from the 60s. So the graphics are going to look like they're from the 60s. But I actually like that because the books back then weren't politically correct. So the illustrations are pretty cool. And you have cool titles. Let me just show you the table of contents. Just so um, I might just do a review just on that. No, the titles don't even say that. But here, introduction. It's... Can y'all read that? They're fun stories. They're thought-provoking stories about all kinds of questions kids might have. Like, how old is time? What does the, the hands of the hourglass... I mean, just words that we use with time, kids don't understand. So that helps to break that down. Another one that's story form, this is our absolute favorite. For those of you uh, who don't know, horrible, those of you who do know, this is horrible science. It comes from horrible histories, which was the first uh, set of books that came out from uh, well, they have different authors, but they're these books are published in England. So they have horrible science, horrible history, horrible mathematics, and horrible geography. So with horrible science, the terrible truth about time, this book is hilarious. It is hilarious. Um, look at that. You can read that. Pause your video and just read that. Once you read that, just the intro page, you'll be sold. You will be sold. Now, what I like about the horrible series is that they ask the questions that we all really think, but never really think to ask. Like for her horrible histories, when they talk about world war, any war, they talk about where did the soldiers go to poop? And then for wars that last a long time, how what, what do they do with that? And they just get into the nitty gritty details. This is my fa absolute favorite. So, that's a story time book. Here's the last story time book. This is at the same moment around the world. Now this helps your child to place themselves not only where they are, but where they are in the world as a whole. So when I first started reading this book, I had our, our um, world map on the wall, Peter's world map. And then I had five clocks I got, I think from Target for like $5. And I did the time zones across the world. And just so they can kind of get a grasp of, you know, international dateline, why this country um, was ahead of us. Like um, at the time, um, my my children's grandfather lived in Belgium. And when we would call, we would have to call like crazy hours because obviously they're ahead of us. So this book talks about when it's a certain time in your world, what time is it in other parts of the world? So at the same time, at the same moment around the world and the graphics, the illustrations are beautiful. 
absolutely beautiful. It's an easy book to read. This would make a great bedtime read. So before, like with your preschooler, kinder first, uh, really any age, but just reading about time in a story form just to help them start to grasp it before you get into workbook stuff. <laughs> okay, so now the last three books, now this one is a little bit about time. It's kind of told in a, in a um, story form, but it's um, much more practical. So you learn the days of the week, the months of the year, how to read a clock, a.m. and p.m., ordinal numbers, and more. But it's very colorful, it's, um, obviously, for your younger set, your kids, but still great nonetheless. Nonetheless, that's a great book to start with. Actually, I would probably start with this one. They give you a a uh, concept of years and months. And what I like about this book is that you have great pictures to make the association. Okay, so your child's not trying to figure it all out. They have a little bit of a spark from the book and then their imagination can take them um, further. And then this one, a second is a hiccup. This is very practical. For each unit measurement of time, they tell you what the activity is. So a second is a hiccup, a minute is let me just show you how long is this how long is a second and they show you how long a second is like a little kiss how long is a is an hour well they show you what you can do in an hour and throughout the night so this one is pretty good too so the child gets to measure what you know what that unit of time is so this is they're all good guys they're all good but this is really really good and finally um, this is a series, Brian Cleary. I have all of his books. I have all of them in language arts, and then he has a few in math. Uh, he has quite a few in math, but we have all of their books. And this one I like. I like the color. Y'all know I like colors in books. Um, but this one, it rhymes. Not all the way throughout, but it, it does rhyme a bit. So that's a great way to reinforce or to um, enhance your learning. And, you know, I like how the text is um, curved, waved out. So it says a second, a minute, a week with days in it. So it reminds me of Dr. Seuss's books, the ones, the, um, the library version books that rhyme like a whale of a tail. There's a map on your lap, you know, those kinds of books. All right, so those are it for the books. I will leave, I will leave a description of links down below. Um, once I'm done with this video. And then finally, we didn't use this. I think we did maybe four or five pages. It looked good at the time, but you guys might be interested in it. So it's Time and Money by the Thinking, who was it by? Thinking Kids. And so the first part covers time. There you go. So if you just wanted your child just to maybe do a page a day just to reinforce what they're learning hands-on, then this is not bad. It just wasn't, you know, we have so many resources. It was just overkill. So uh, um, I'm giving this to another mom. Um, and then lastly, there are lots of songs on YouTube about time. I don't have time to list them right now. And really, these resources work very well for my children, but um, if you have any resources that you love that worked well for your kids, put them down below um, in, the, um, in the comment section. So I think that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll probably do one on money because I, I have a lot of money resources and I wanna get them out so I can free up space um, for other stuff. So um, you guys know how that go. You get free space and then you fill it up as fast as you got rid of the other stuff. So happy, Vlogtober day, what day is it? Oh, 12. So Vlogtober day 12. Did I start with that? <laughs> Vlogtober day 12, teaching time to your kids or teaching time resources. Sorry, resources. Teaching time is a whole nother uh, video. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful Saturday. I'm going to get out of here and finish working on the fish tank that you guys saw in my Vlogtober um, yesterday video. And I think that's it. 
yeah, everything about time, that's pretty much it. So you know what? For the money, I have a lot of money and resources. I might do, I like to give away some stuff to you guys. I don't know how that would work, but we'll see. But anyway, let me get out of here. Thank you for um, hanging out with me and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye guys. And this is Nikki with The Homeschool Life. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And that's it. <laughs> Bye, guys. Oh, you know what? And just to... Wait. Oh, sorry. I have one more resource. I have one more resource. I only use this with my oldest child. As you can tell, it's old because it's really dirty and dusty. I have no idea where I got this. It might have been a secondhand store, but it's, te it's Time Teacher and it's by Toy Max. Toy Max. And it's got a remote control and then it will give you like the time and then you have to uh, find the time and you'll have to push up and down into your answer. Um, you do a quiz, we'll start. And then the owl talks. It would say, what time? <laughs> It, the owl would say, 11 o'clock today. And then you would have to type in, press this to, to go to 11 o'clock or move it here. You had the option and then uh, you hit the time and there you go. So this is too cumbersome. I don't know. It's really whatever. But if you're interested in it, try to find it. I would probably go on eBay. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm out of here. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace out.